Welcome to week seven, and in week seven we're going to talk about waves in the ocean. Um, video one, this video, we're going to talk about what a wave is specifically and talk about how they behave. In the second video, we'll get into the types of waves that exist in the world's oceans, what they look like, things like that. And then in video three, we'll go into the specifics of what causes these waves. So what is a wave? Well, if you've been to the beach, you've seen waves crashing on a beach. Well, that is a wave. Physicists talk about waves as disturbances within a medium, such as air, water, or rock. Oceanographers, however, talk about these disturbances or vibrations at the ocean surface or at boundaries between layers in the ocean. So like boundaries between salt and fresh water, so on and so forth. So those are um, kind of what uh, waves are, descriptions of, of, uh, of what they are. How do they behave? Well, we'll talk about um, measuring waves in the next slide. But we categorize waves and describe them based on how they move and their shape. Uh, they move in two different waves. We can have traveling waves that actually move from one area to another, like across an ocean basin. We can have standing waves, which are waves that actually stand still. They don't actually travel from place to place. Um, and waves can change direction or shape and speed by obstacles that are encountered. And so we can describe them as reflected waves, refracted, or diffracted. And we'll go through those different scenarios in the next few slides. So what do we measure on a wave? Well, um, we can measure the wavelength, the wave height, the frequency, and the period. So the wavelength is the distance between two crests or two troughs of a wave. So in this figure here, we go from the crest of one wave A, you can see that on the figure that's the highest point, to the crest of wave B, so the highest point of that wave. The trough would be the lowest point on a wave. And you can also measure the wavelength from trough to trough. Either way is fine, you should get the same answer. We can measure that wave height going from the bottom uh, to the top, so from the, cr the trest, crest on the top to the trough on the bottom, and that would be your height. We can measure the frequency, which is the number of wave crests that pass a point in each second, so we can measure that um, from point A and count how many waves go past point A in a second, and that would be the wave frequency. We can also measure the wave period, which uh, would be the time it would take from a wave at point A to reach point B. So that's frequency, period, height, and length. We can look closer at the anatomy of a wave and see kind of how things move at the surface and inside a wave by visiting this NOAA Anatomy of a Wave website, and you can see uh, the first picture will be that figure I had in the slide. But when we look at what's happening um, within that wave and at the surface here, if you were floating on a surfboard, say, in the Pacific Ocean or you see a bird out there, that bird might kind of look like it might just be bobbing up and down in the water, but it's actually moving in a circle. And that's because you've got this wave coming up, you're moving up one side and down the other, this circular motion. So that um, floating object is going to stay pretty much in the same spot um, as a wave passes over. It's not going to change too much, just rotate in that circular pattern. When you get inside the water, we see this motion kind of propagating downwards. So a fish in the water is going to do the same thing. It's going to rotate in a circle. And as you get deeper and deeper into the water towards the bottom of the wave or the wave base, that circular motion gets smaller and smaller and eventually disappears. So below that wave base, objects in the water aren't going to move around. They're just going to be stationary where those above it are going to move in that rotational pattern getting bigger and bigger until you get up to the very surface of the water. <clears throat> so when we talk about waves actually rolling up onto a beach and breaking, well, how does that happen? Well, we have that circular motion inside the wave out in the deep ocean where there's no friction, no interaction with the sea floor. Those waves move closer and closer towards the, the shoreline and eventually the bottom or wave base, that dashed line on this figure, will start to intersect the seafloor. And when that happens, the bottom of the wave is going to 
actually experience some friction because it's starting to drag on the bottom of the ocean floor. And as it does that, the bottom start, starts to slow down, but the top keeps moving. And so you see the wave becoming a little bit more pointy at the surface, and we see the waves coming a little bit closer together because they're starting to slow down and they're getting kind of packed together a little more. As that wave continues up the beach, we see that those circles start to get more distorted because the wave's getting dragged along the bottom and kind of deformed. And eventually, it's to a point where the bottom drag is so much that um, it can't keep up with the top of the wave. The wave kind of topples over and breaks at the surface. So wherever you see breakers, that is a sign that you've got shallow water nearby. So if you're out in a boat, you see waves breaking, it's a sign that you should probably steer clear of that object because you might run aground. And that's not a good thing. So to talk about how waves actually move and propagate from one place to another and what happens when they um, run into obstacles, we're going to go through a few different wave models. This first wave model um, is a traveling wave, so it's going to move from one side of the tank to the other. And it's in the open ocean, a single point source, and no obstacle. So if I move this view so you can see the tank, we've got our point source, this yellow dot, and then the blue area is the tank. So if we um, were to kind of maybe drop a bead into the tank or maybe just touch the tank with a finger, we would see the wave propagating outwards and then um, we see the uh, waves closer to where it originated disappear. <clears throat> so to see this again, we see the waves propagate outwards from the center, getting further and further away, disappearing from where the original point source was and just traveling off screen. So the next situation that you can see here, and I'll kind of move this up so we can see the text, is a traveling wave in an open ocean using a wave paddle. And that wave paddle we can see in the screen down here. So we've got our wave paddle, straight line, and we're going to simulate waves. And we can see those wave fronts move forward parallel to the object it, that created it across the tank and gone. So to see that again, we've got the wave propagating across the tank parallel to the bar that created it. And that would be just a traveling wave moving across um, the ocean. So in real life, in the real ocean, we see the waves rolling up in this kind of straight line. So the next few models we look at are going to be straight line wave paddle created waves. So our next scenario, still using the wave paddle, open ocean but with a barrier, a straight barrier that's going to be parallel to the waves that are created. So let's get a better view here of this wave tank and our reflector, which is labeled. So dark bar is our reflector, waves created by that yellow paddle, travel across, hit the reflector, and bounce straight back like a mirror image. So to see that again, waves created, bounce off the reflector, and come straight back. So reflected right back in the direction it came from. Our second scenario, still reflection, but we've taken that barrier and put it at an oblique angle. And the reason for that is because, well, if you think about the open ocean, we don't have waves striking nice and parallel to the object. They're going to hit at an angle. So we're going to see what happens to these waves as they are striking that reflector that is at an angle, which you can see here, reflector wave paddle, and then let's see what happens. Those waves travel across the tank, hit the barrier, and actually reflect back at a right angle. So to see that again here, waves are created, travel across the tank, and then bounce off at a right angle. Now hopefully in lab, when you guys simulate, simulate this, you'll see the same thing. Cross our fingers for that. 
Uh, sometimes it takes uh, a few tries to actually really see that reflection happen, so be patient. Our second scenario here involves um, a barrier that isn't completely solid, so a gate in the middle of our barrier or a C stack would create very similar situation and what's happening here is what's called diffraction. So a wave is actually being bent. So if we move over here to our area, we see our wave paddle, our barrier with the gate in the very center. And if I start our waves, we see they travel across as usual squish through that barrier and get bent as it travels through. So to see that again, travel across the tank, squish through and get bent because those waves are actually, if I go backwards here, as that wave is kind of squishing through that opening, the edges of the wave are being dragged against the edge of this reflector and they're being slowed down. So that's why this wave gets bent. The center is going to keep moving at a similar speed because there's no barriers in its way. There's no um, areas where it can be slowed down by friction, whereas the edges are what are interacting with that surface and what are slowing down. So that's why it gets that bent shape. So that is diffraction. We could put a little um, rock in the center, which is what you're going to do in lab, and you can, you'll be able to see very similar features. So the one thing this is missing, if I go back here, um, is right as this wave strikes this reflector, yes, waves get kind of squeezed through and get diffracted and bent, but these, this wave would be actually bounced back as well. So I, I should have put little reflections on that wave here as well. But that's okay. The point is the bending of the waves. So the next one we'll look at has to do with shallow water. So in this scenario, shallow water, open ocean, refraction. So the waves are going to travel into the green area, which is going to be the shallower situation. So if I move this into view again, here. We got green, shallow, open ocean, wave paddle. So we start those waves, they travel across, they get into the shallower water, and boom, they get bent. And then continue on out of view. So to see that again, those waves travel across, they get bent because it's shallower water, the wave base in that area is interacting with that shallower area and slowing that portion down. So again, you see those waves slowing down because of that shallower water. The interaction of the bottom of the wave with the shallower portion causes the side in the green area, the shallower section, to slow down and kind of bend that wave at a nice straight angle. You guys are going to do this in lab as well. So to kind of wrap things up here in video one, we went over what a wave is, talked about how they behave, what happens when a wave rolls up onto a coastline, and then what happens when those waves interact with different features to create reflection, refraction, and diffraction. So we'll sign off, come back in the next video and talk about some of the waves that we see in the world's oceans.